Today we're going to get all animated and look at uh, a few a little operations you can have working on the layout that aren't trains. Here's my little setup here that I've built just as a test. Now imagine that this is an industrial siding. Out here is the main line, in here is a factory and there's a gate across. Now gated industrial sidings are very common but the main line people have dropped off a wagon here. We have a loco there and uh, we, need to, we need to collect the wagon and take it into the factory. We drive the loco up to the gate, very simple, and then as if by magic, the gate opens. Drive the loco out, pick up the wagon. And the gate closes. Now, how have I done that? Well, what I've done is I've used something called a servo. Now, I guess a lot of people would have heard of servos, but uh, this is what a standard size servo looks like. It's a little uh, motor in there driving some gears and it drives something that uh, rotates the top of it. This, this will spin round. That's not, not very obvious. So let's look at a servo in its natural home, um, in this case being a radio control boat and the servo operates the rudder. You can see the big big box down there and there's an arm on the side and if I waggle the stick you can see that the servo, which I must leave, isn't, fit, isn't fixed down very well but it does the job, it waggles the rudder back and forth. Okay, simple enough and it's something that, um, that the guys with the radio control have been using for many many years. You find all sorts of radio control devices um, are based, the whole thing will be based around servos. But they're great, we can use them for all sorts of model making. If we look underneath my um, test piece, you can see the servo there. And the way I've worked it is there is a hole in the middle that, uh, that I've stuffed the gate post down into. So I've got a metal gate post poking out the hole in the servo. And uh, when the servo turns, it opens and closes the gate. The thing with servos is, that they have, um, they have three wires going into them. Black and red are for uh, power, positive and negative, and white is for signal. Now the signal is a sort of uh, pulse wave modulated signal, which is about as far as I go because it all, gets a bit, um, it, it, it all gets a bit confusing for me. So what I need is I need something that will provide me with the signal. Now in the case of the radio control boat, there is a, uh, there is a receiver in there that does all that work. So what I've got is I've got a little servo tester attached and these are really simple things to wire up. Power goes into one side and I'm using six volts worth of uh, batteries here. Servos do like quite a regulated supply and, and six volt is plenty. And out the side it comes and drives the, uh, it drives the servo. And in fact, most servo testers can drive two or three servos at the same, at the same time. Um, so you could actually operate a lot of things. And really, it is, that, it is that simple. Now, you don't just have to operate gates with servos. What you've got is you've got a device that will spin round and round quite happily. Let's uh, plug, in my other, plug in my other servo here. So there we have it. There's the big servo. And I can just twiddle the knob and you can see the, uh, the top turning, which you could use for all sorts of things. I mean, quite quickly, um, that could be a wagon turntable. Okay, there's a little bit more sophistication and modelling required there, but that could be a wagon turntable. Or, as you saw with the uh, boat, you can attach a rod to the uh, plate and push something backwards and forwards. So, how about, a, um, how, about, how about operating a door on the front of a warehouse or lifting something up and down? For example, a, a sweeps broom coming out of the uh, top of a chimney on a house would be, uh, it would be quite a little amusing thing. There's even more to servos than this. And I should say, servos come in all sorts of um, sizes. This is a standard servo. This is a micro servo. Standard servos are about five pounds upwards. This is actually quite a good one. It's got metal gears in. To be honest, you're probably not going to need metal gears because you're not hauling um, great booms on a, on a model yacht or aerolons on a very large aircraft around. So five pounds worth of standard servo. Micro servos are sort of three pound fifty upwards. So none of, none of this is particularly expensive kit. The 
Other thing with servos is that you can actually take them to pieces. This is, this is the inside of a servo. Though there's, there would normally be a set of gears on top of this that drive the, um, drive the top. And that potentiometer is how, that, how the uh, model knows where the servo is. So for our purposes, we can just ignore it. But it does give us another extra little feature. There's the motor running, and using my servo tester, I can reverse it and change the speed. You probably can't see that, but trust me, it's making that, that whining noise is the motor running. And I can slow it down and reverse it and that thing off the tester. So there's potential there, for example, for crane animations. You could mount crane on top of there, spin it backwards and forwards, and, and uh, put a winding drum on there and lift the uh, hook up down. Loads and loads of potential. And I think, to be honest, this is what all this uh, little talk is about. Servos have got lots of possibilities. It's not an expensive, um, it's not an expensive thing to play with. I made a gate work. What could you do?